Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Heal Profoundly and Enduringly. It's so nice to see you. I can't wait to introduce our special guest for today because Darlene is someone who's very, very near and dear to my heart, and I can't wait to introduce you to her. Um, This show, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is all about bringing forward healing modalities, um, coaches, entrepreneurs, therapists, helpers to assist you on your healing path and your path of empowerment. So I really bring people on here who can offer you resources and tips and tools and connection to be able to add to your toolbox so that you can empower yourself to move forward. So today we have Darlene Soshin here. And after 25 years as a teacher and a cancer diagnosis in 2005, three archangels visited Darlene with a beautiful message. I love how your bio is like a story. It makes me so happy. She would not only survive cancer, her life and path would forever change and expand into being a bigger player out in the world as a healer, a warrior, and a mentor of many, and that she is. Her foundation is in the sacred teachings of Reiki, love, and a deep understanding of how precious life truly is. Darlene's mission is to prepare healers for their mission through coaching, classes, and individualized programs. So, Darlene's a Reiki master teacher. She's an Arthur, author, an Arthur. She's an author, a foundation builder, and the healer's cheerleader. And she absolutely is. She initiates and activates healers and light workers' courage to come forth and live their true divine purpose. So today we're going to be talking about, oh, there she is. She was <laughs> hiding. No, see, it was like you were like hiding behind the curtain as I was introducing you. That's what it was. You were just like, I'm just going to stay behind the curtain and then I'm going to reveal myself. Yeah. It wasn't that I was having trouble with my camera. (laughs) Not at all. No, you were hiding behind. It was like the Wizard of Oz. (laughs) That's funny. Funny, funny. I love it. Welcome, honey. It's so good to have you here. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Oh, good, good, good. So I always start off the show the same way, which is asking, what is that one thing that you feel is necessary to heal profoundly and enduringly? It's something, it's a question that clients and healers I know ask me all the time. And I have, I noticed over the last year or two, it has been the same answer. Mm. And that is devoting time to yourself every Mm. single day. Not just, you know, when you have time or, you know, haphazardly or a couple times a week, this is something that if you want momentum, if you want connection to your soul, uh, guidance regularly, which is what people look for, mm-hmm. it, it's, a, it's daily um, connecting to yourself, having some sort of ritual. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And you know, it's so funny because we do, we expect like, I want consistency in my life and I want um, safety and stability long-term, but then they're all over the freaking place running a million miles a minute and they're not taking any time. Right. And so, and it's funny. Cause I used to think that this was like, I needed to be regimented. Like I need to meditate every day or I need to journal every day. And it's just not how my personality is. And it depends on the person. And so I find that the way you said it is exactly right. Like anything, it, it can be anything. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be the same thing every day, but just making sure that every day you're devoting to yourself. Right. It, exactly. That is the key because depending on somebody's, whether it's their astro- their natal chart or their human design, it might not look the same every day. And for some people it does because they need a, a very, you know, structured um, ritual pattern. Yeah. Uh, but it, that's the key. Every single day, what is it um, that you'll do? And so two things, devoting a certain amount of time and two, asking your body and your spirit, what, what is it that I require today? Mm. And then stop and listen. And if you're doing that every day, your answer will come to you quicker and it will be yeah. more clear. Like you said, it, it might be today I need to sit down and journal. Today I might need to sit down and actually meditate. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's, but it's that, it's that connection every single day and allowing yourself to sit in a few minutes of silence and Mm. space, giving yourself space. And we've talked about that before in your, in your mastermind space and silence. And for some people that's, that's the hardest part. Yeah. 
because you know they're not so sure what they might hear right oh yeah that's how i felt the first time that the when i would first go into the akashic records i had so much anxiety and i think that part of it was cuz i was adjusting my vibration and i was sick at the time so my physical body was not in the best shape but it was also because i was just like what are they going to tell me <laughs> Like, I know they're going to bring something through to do that. I don't want to do. Like, I was like, I don't want to do that yet. I'm not ready. But of course I was ready because they always know when we're ready, you know, before we are. But when we sit with ourselves in stillness, those answers come. And sometimes that clarity is something that people are like, I don't know if I'm ready to hear that. It, it, that's usually the case. And it's, it's often why people aren't jumping into their, their gifts um, and listening to their, their purpose and their nudges that they're getting. Yeah. Yeah. And I also feel it's interesting because you were talking about like listening to the body and like, what do you need for the day? And I love that because listening to my body is something that, you know, I hold very near and dear. Um, but I also love the opportunity to allow God to tell us what to do that day. You know, and I mean, it's going to come anyway, if you're sitting in silence and you're connected to that relationship and you're open to receiving, you know, whether you intend to or not. But I think also being able to say like, what would you have me do today? Like, how would you have me deliver service to myself and to other people? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And so one of the questions uh, about the silence and the space that mm. a question that some people ask me is well, who do I know is showing up? Like if I do hear a voice, mm -hmm. how do I know who that is? Mm -hmm. So what, what would you recommend for, for when somebody asks that question? I would say two things. One is who gives a shit because <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to know, like your ego wants to know the answer to that. Like, who is this? Who's talking to me? And it's like, well, who really fucking cares? Like, it's just a message. Like it's a message from the universe. It's a message from divine intelligence. Who cares who the deliverer of that message is? However, I do realize that that can be a better answer for people who might be a little bit more well-versed in intuition. So people who are newer to it, I definitely recommend cultivating a relationship with like one angel or one guide or one loved one who has passed on or something, because when you get used to that and you get used to the way that communication comes from other dimensions, then you're going to be able to tease that apart better. Like you're going to be able to tell more. You can also just ask like, who is this? What are your intentions? Like, what's the purpose of you showing up for me today? And they may answer now and they may answer later. Like you may realize in a week or in two days or in a month, like, Oh, now I know who that was. You know what I mean? And so just know that the knowing is coming to you and that somewhere within you does know that, but our egos get so wrapped up on like having answers. That, yeah, absolutely. Especially in our culture. And uh -huh. one, yeah, one of the beautiful gifts I learned in one of my modalities was asking a question doesn't necessarily mean you're waiting for the answer. Asking mm -hmm. a question opens your intuition up, opens your energy up to receiving a response. So what, uh, it took me a little, a little while to get used to this. It's not always a specific answer that will come. And again, it's that having a daily practice mm -hmm. where you are familiar with your body, you're familiar with your own energy, you will be familiar when your that response is sent to you. Mm, and I like so much. Yeah. Right. So then you're less likely to be dependent upon an outside source like a guide, which is, you know, it's beautiful. That's beautiful to have somebody to, to depend on. Um, what I love to do is teach people to work with their own energy. And not to look for, so yes, a, a guide is, is lovely to have and very supportive and protective. Mm -hmm. We know ourselves best though. Yeah. And so when we're having this daily practice and we're listening to our own bodies and we're receiving a specific, a specific frequency of energy, 
that will be the response to the question that we pose. See, that is brilliant. It gives me so many chills. I love it so much because what you're saying is like, you're, you're tuning yourself, like you're attuning to your own frequency. And as such, since you're open to receiving, adjusting your own frequency continually. So we get to continue to return to this. It's funny because people think like, oh my gosh, like, why is this happening in my life? Like I'm doing all the things and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, you're just upgrading your frequency anymore. You're even more like you're realizing those things that need to fall away because they're not following you at this new level. And we get to continue to enter into a new level of authenticity as we attune to ourselves. And I think that's so beautiful because like you said, like we are spiritual beings, like we are spiritual. And so we have spirit inside of us. We don't need to look outside of ourselves. That's really beautiful. Right. And also we tend to be, uh, in our culture, uh, we tend to look for, we have expectations. Hmm. We're often already in conclusion. Yeah. Oh my so gosh. when you, when you open up with a question, so a lot of this is um, what I learned in access consciousness, uh, an energy mm-hmm. modality, and it, it shifted, it changed my life completely because what happens is if we already have those conditions or those programmed um, expectations and conclusions that we're unconscious of, that's what we will be expecting if we ask a question and want an answer. So the yeah. answer will be conditioned. Yeah. Yeah. It will be what we're already thinking should happen. Mm-hmm. So when you're not waiting for, when you open up to a question without waiting for a specific answer, so many more possibilities will open up. See, and that's why I love, love, love the way that you do your work and, and the way that you embody the energy, because it's, it's so gentle and feminine, which is for those of you who don't know much about feminine energy, it is about that receiving energy and about just like kind of softening and allowing yourself to just be loved and held and offering the same to others. And, but you bring it in a way that has this like immense power to it. Like that, although we're just receiving this really gentle energy and experiencing it, we also feel the power behind it. And to be able to do that is impressive considering what you just said, like we're in a society and in a world where we have already made our conclusions, right? And so it's, it's making your evidence or your answer energetic and vibrational instead of cognitive. So can you explain that to people? Like, well, I guess just like how they would feel that or like what, what that feels like inside them? That's, that's a great question. So for me, everyone reads energy differently. Right. Uh, So some people, it'll just be a knowing, like uh, they'll know if something is true to them. And what that often is, again, a daily, a daily practice will alert you to this is what your body tells you. So an energy coming in, if it's true to you, it will be, it will feel opened and expansive. And like you were saying before, goosebumps, Mm -hmm. uh, chills on your body, uh, tingles, you smile automatically. If it's not true to you, if it's one of those conditions, um, answers or expectations, conclusions that we were trained um, to expect, the body will contract. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't like that answer, but that's what I'm hearing. So that's what I'm supposed to do. So mm-hmm. it's about feeling the, your body because your body is what is receiving the, the energies and the frequencies. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, it's our guiding post. It's our GPS is our physical. That's really our, so much of why we're here in a physical body navigating all of this. It's, it's yeah. giving us all our answers. I always say that my body is like a tuning fork. (laughs) Absolutely. You know, it's like a tuning fork. Yeah. And the the, the tuning fork is a great way too to uh, balance the body. So that's another, that's a a great point actually that you you brought up. So there are very, there are tools and techniques so that we can attune the body to receive the frequencies and the energies. Mm -hmm. So if we are, 
um, in chaos, if we are all over the place, um, stress, you know, stress in our lives, um, not giving ourselves that, that daily devotion time, the body and energy will be all over the place, yeah. which means we're out of alignment. So that daily practice, what I would suggest is bringing in a tool that will help attune the body and bring it back to its natural state of harmony. So Reiki is, is an example of that. The Reiki yeah. energy helps to bring you back to your natural frequency because all humans have their own resonance. Yeah. And tuning forks are another example. Um, sound bowls, uh, chanting, which is which what you love to do. That's like one of the number one yeah. tools that they've been using for thousands and thousands of years to tune the body. So if someone is wanting to tune the body, and if they're asking, well, how do I know and how do I feel and, and, and know what my body is doing, mm -hmm. first realign it with yeah. some sort of frequency technique. Enchanting is, is right, is so easy to do. You can, you know, like YouTube, you can go to and find yeah. a, a beautiful chanting. Um, the traditional Japanese Reiki has several uh, chants that are part of the system, like uh, chanting the five precepts and the symbols are meant to be chanted in the body. Um, tapping, something else that you, you do. All of, so what I would recommend to people if they're want, wanting to know what a daily ritual would look like, mm -hmm. some of the examples would be to bring in something that would help align and, and reattune their body, like chanting. And play with it like play with what feels good. And, you know, cause like, that's what I did. I just kind of like bounced around and tried a bunch of different things on for size, you know? And yeah. there were some, like, I would say the vast majority were effective, but then there were the ones that were like mind blowingly effective for me, you know, and your body liked. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's why I love like, and being able to identify what they help with is, is helpful just as a teacher, you know, just because like that way I can, be like, okay, if you're having obsessive, like chanting is a, is fantastic for people who have any kind of obsessive thoughts or anxiety. That's like one of the best things tapping too. But, um, honestly, I like stringing them together too. That's the other way I like to play. It's like, okay, there's chanting, but then it's like, what if I tap before the chanting, then does that make the chanting more potent, you know? And like, for instance, with meditation, so many of my clients, uh, over the years have struggled with anxiety. And like the biggest thing with anxiety is well, I can't sit still and freaking meditate. My mind's going a million miles, you know? And so yeah, it's like, okay, move your body first and moving your body can include exercise, yoga, stretching, qigong, tai chi. It can include, um, it can include chanting because you're creating a vibration with your physical body, you know, but like movement in some way before yes. you meditate. So that's why I just like encourage, just, just play with it and kind of see what concoction feels like, oh, that's my mix. <laughs> right. And that's, that's one of, um, the sessions that I love to do is um, mentoring healers who come in because they, they say, you know, well, you talk about a daily practice or I can't quiet my mind to get yeah. to my gifts, to hear what I'm supposed to do right. or to tune into my own body. So we, we look at what it is that that particular person, what would work for them specifically, because I want everyone to know there's not one answer. It, yeah. it looks different for each person. So I had a client a couple of years ago and she, everyone around her was insisting that she needs to meditate, just go sit and do it, do it until it works. And as we're talking, you know, we, she was telling me she's an athlete. She loves to go to the gym and she really connects with herself after a really good workout. And I said, what, what does that tell you? And, right. and she connects the best while she's running or playing tennis or lifting weights. And I said, now what I want you to do after you, if you have time or, you know, schedule this and even play with it after you have a workout in the gym or after you go for a run, go put on a guided meditation for five or 10 minutes and see how that works. Mm -hmm. And she came back and said, holy cow, that was just like a completely a completely different experience. So See, that's, that's, I love that you're offering that because really all you're doing 
is reflecting their own power back to them, like, and reflecting their own answers. Like they've had them within, like, she obviously (laughs) knew that she enjoys doing this. Right. But it's Mm -hmm. like, it's like just the, it can be those tiniest of micro adjustments that all you need is that like unconditional witness of what you're doing to be able to reflect to you. And then they're like, Oh, right. And it can be the tiniest shift that makes a huge difference, like a light switch. Right. And it, it, 99% of the time, the person says it like within five minutes of a conversation, it's, mm. it's there, it's, they know, and, yeah. and they've, they've been taught not to listen to that inner knowing. So yes. that's what, that's my mission. Turn you up, that inner <sighs> yeah. knowing back on that connection to it. Oh, mm. Yeah. I love that uh, very much. Go it, ahead. What's really cool is I was just listening to a video the other day. So the importance of meditation mm. and well, there's different kinds of meditation. Yeah. And I love Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about this too. So there's walking meditation. There's, you know, you go out in the woods, you take a walk and that's a different kind of calming your body. So what we're wanting to do is calm and relax, you know, the nervous system, the mind, and what is it that you'll feel totally online doing. Mm. For me, it's resting in the sand at the beach that just totally aligns me. Uh, And that, so the importance of meditation is getting the body to a certain frequency so that it brings you back to that natural um, hertz frequency that the human body is because it's this electromagnetic energy that you put in coherence with, with Gaia, with the earth. Mm-hmm. It was the most fascinating video um, mm. because I had never thought, I always you know, understood about the certain brain waves. Right. You know, it's important um, to connect to yourself. You put yourself in, in that brain wave, but this was a whole, this went to a whole other level of why meditation is so important. It's because we're here, we're designed, we are nature, right? We are yeah. God, we are the universe. So when you allow yourself to go into this specific kind of meditation, you are connecting directly to that source. Yeah. It's really, it was so beautiful. So it's connecting the heart with the mind and then with, with Gaia and the universe. Yeah. And, and that's cool too, because the frequency of Gaia is shifting. Right. So, and of course that's, I mean, earth is massive compared to us little humans. So, (laughs) you know, it's shifting, but it's not like it's going from like, you know, what is it? 7.8 or something, something like that. Um, it's not like it's jumping all the way to like 15 or like something like that. Right. So it's, it's going to make tiny changes because it's a bigger entity, but yeah, I mean, that's the thing to know too. It's like, as we evolve, so does Gaia. So the more that we connect to nature, the more that we connect to mother earth, the more that we understand its frequency and receive that, the more that we get to grow with it. Cause it's not just like, we're growing, like the whole universe is growing. The whole universe is expanding. expanding. And that's what's beautiful about that connect. Like if, if connecting to earth is part of your daily practice, that will relieve some of the resistance to how do I do that? What do I do? And I can't hear myself. What are my guides saying? When you connect to earth Mm. and that's your, um, you know, your goal for the day, Mm. how spectacular that is. Mm. Your, Your body, your spirit will just open up naturally, much more organically than if you're forcing yourself to, to do something. I agree. Yeah, I agree. So, um, what do you think, like, I know you've been doing this for what, almost 30 years. How long have I been 20 years consciously 17. Okay. (laughs) I hear you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's, you just have such a beautiful, not only breadth of knowledge, but I mean, just, just vibration, you know, like you have, you're somebody who practices what you preach. You're somebody who every single day makes that commitment and your reflections are just, they're so centered because you have that clarity because you are, are walking the walk, you know? And so when you're helping other people, what do you think you're mostly here to kind of guide them 
on, especially I, for people who are on this live or on the replay who are like, mm-hmm. Oh, I love Darlene's energy. I want it. Like, what does she do? <laughs> like, who does she help? Like, can you share that with us? My, my mission is to support healers who just, they know they have this calling. They may even be in a, a career already where they're practicing their work, but they're wanting to take it deeper or they're still in the spiritual closet because yeah. uh, they're a little frightened about well, their life changing or admitting yeah. that they have these gifts. My mission is to be your cheerleader, to mm-hmm. support you, give you the tools to help you expand what's inside of you and teach you how to listen to that. And I do it in a variety of ways. Reiki training is one of them um, because I work with uh, a a system of Reiki where it's about uncovering your true self through meditation and chanting. Uh, And it's even, even if you don't want to become a Reiki practitioner. So I think part of the confusion about Reiki training for some people is, well, I don't want to become a a practitioner. Mm -hmm. Reiki, um, the Reiki system I teach, it's for true self. It's to uncover what you're trying to get to. Yeah. And it includes already a daily practice. So the the tools and the techniques are already part of the system of Reiki. Mm -hmm. Um, meditations and chanting affirmations, breath work. It's all right there. So I love doing Reiki training for people. And if they are also interested in being a hands-on healer, we do the the practitioner work. Uh, And also for people who aren't sure, we do, um, I I offer mentoring with people. So let's let's get to know each other. Let's go through, um, you know, some, some work some talking, some, you know, exercises, and let's get to what those, first of all, what the gifts are. And second of all, most important, let's, you know, work with dissipating the fears around why you don't want to step onto that path, because it's there, it's calling to you. And if you're going to suppress, like if you suppress any emotion, it might erupt into something else. So my mission is to support people so that they can thrive with whatever it is they choose to do. They can choose to add healing and energy work into what they're already doing uh, or become that healer. And what a huge movement that I would love to start is the preparation. So for whatever modality someone is invested in um, and working towards what is it that you can do as a healer to stay healthy uh, and also thrive? Uh, and that's so important because not all modalities teach that. So yeah. you went to school for therapy, you know, where in the ther- in the in that program and counseling, do they teach how to take care of yourself? Um, so even like you know, Reiki, other Reiki programs, I've seen uh you know, every single day, take care of yourself. It's not just about being a practitioner and showing up when a client is there for Reiki sessions. This is an ongoing every single day. So underlying every, all the work I do, it's to prepare healers for their mission, their mission in doing so. So they remain healthy and they thrive while doing it. Yeah. And that's, that's why you call yourself a foundation builder, which I honestly think is so brilliant because that's exactly what you do. And that's exactly what you are doing when you are taking care of yourself every single day. You know, you're providing a foundation, not just for yourself, but for those loved ones in your life, for the people that you're helping for your business for, you know, um, and really building that foundation, realizing that honestly, it's already within you. You It's just cultivating it and bring it, bringing it to the forefront. And, and that's the key right there. That's when, wow. that's when most people go, oh, I'm doing it for my family. Yeah. You know, or, or I'm doing it and for my clients. Yeah. And it's interesting that oftentimes they are the last person they do it for themselves. What gets them on board is realizing if they're healthy, if they're taking care of themselves, everybody in their life benefits and, you know, more so, uh, the majority of the people that I've worked with in the last year or two Mm -hmm. have been 
coming to build a foundation so that they can take care of a loved one, whether it's a child, you know, diagnosed with, um, mm-hmm. with something like autism, mm-hmm. because, because that's something that there's not, you know, readily answers for, right? So yeah. they realize, okay, if I need to take care of myself and find the patience and the love for myself, then I'll be a better, you know, parent, or I'll be able to support my child better. Or someone, um, th- th- it was so beautiful, a husband, two husbands came um, in the last year because their wives were diagnosed with cancer. And they're like, I, I know I have this healing gift. My hands warm up when I think about helping people. Uh-huh. I want to build a foundation or learn some sort of healing technique to help my wife. <laughs> it was, it's just been such a beautiful path. Um, for everybody. And see, that's why it's funny. Cause like I, when I started out, I mean, obviously I've been a therapist for 20 years, but when I started this energy work, it was about helping people heal, you know? Um, and it was from that kind of perspective of like, okay, how can you and get, get, well, I guess just excavate the healing gifts you already have so that you can help yourself and those around you. But then it also comes to like, very similar to what you were saying a few minutes ago, which is if you can master your own personal authority, which for me is not about whether you have a business or not, right? Like right. if you can master your own personal authority, which for me, what this looked like was taking full ownership and responsibility for my physical health, you know, and not giving it away to medical doctors and giving it away to people who said, do this, do this, do this, like taking full ownership for that. Um, and also just as a mother and as a wife and being able to really get to a space of intimacy that, I mean, we've always had very, very healthy relationships, but just deepening that intimacy because they're so important to me. And so mastering that to the point where like, that's a no brainer. Those are my non-negotiables. Those are my top priorities in my life because I was so caught up with you know, what degree I had and how Mm -hmm. much success I had and all of that for so many years. And it was something that I had to, I had to leave behind. It wasn't a narrative I wanted to carry with me. And once I mastered that personal authority of like, what is truly important and nourishing for myself and for others, it's me having this level of presence with myself and with my family and, um, everything unfolds from there. Right. Whatever success you want in your life just comes because you've mastered that. Like mm-hmm. if you master your professional authority, great. That's not necessarily going to translate to personal, but if you master your personal. So I love that we're talking about this because I feel like it's so perfect. It, and it's, it tends to be backwards, right? Like when yeah. I have the perfect job, the career, I, know. I have the money, the retirement saved, mm-hmm. then my personal life will fall into place. Yes. It's the, it's the op. Everything is the opposite of what it appears to be. <laughs> I know. And that's how I operated for years. It was like, get your degree, get your master's, open your practice, get this many clients, make this amount of money, get your retirement, get your kids college, but you know, all that. And it was like, then me, but my body was like, no, thanks. (laughs) That's all a distraction. Exactly. So that's why a daily practice, some, some sort of tuning in to your own resources, your own heart, rather than what culture and out your external sources have been conditioning you to. We've, we've got to clear that out. And the one way to start clearing out all of that shit in our heads Mm-hmm. is a daily practice getting to know your own energy um and really really listening to the cues that your body is giving you beautiful That's what the physical body is for yeah yeah I love and that. if it's if it's disease or illness Mm-hmm. that's your body telling you something. Cause you, both you and I experienced, you know, illness. I was diagnosed with cancer in 2005, right. which led me to my path and my angels. And, um, so what my mission is, is to help people so they don't have to experience that. <laughs> I know that huge two by four. Yeah. I so feel you like at the beginning <laughs> of this whole experience, I used to tell people don't be like Laura Mazzotta who gets knocked on her ass with sepsis and almost dies. Like, yeah, get yep. yourself. like I'm going to scream this to anybody who will listen for as long as they will listen. 
take care of your freaking self. Right. And some people are going to choose not to listen and, and do their own thing, which is fine. That's their path. You know, they're sovereign beings. They get to make that decision, but it's also just like, it's unbelievable how much you don't realize it's whittling you down in the background because this mm-hmm. is, this is the thing, like before even coming to this work, I've always been somebody who loves self-development. I mean, hello, like I've been a freaking therapist for 20 years. I've always been into self-development. I've always been introspective. I've always been working on myself, but it wasn't at the depth that I needed. And I just didn't even know about it. Like I didn't know it existed, you know? And so I just love that you're bringing this forward to people. And for those who are feeling really connected to you and just want to chat, like just to open up a conversation and say, I just really like your energy. And I just want to say hi to you. How can they reach out? What's the best way for them to connect with you? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I have a website, darlenesocian.net. That would probably be the easiest place to start. Okay. Um, And then, you know, emailing me. Okay. So we're going to have those, um, those links dropped here in a minute too. So you guys can just click right on them and, and head over and chat with Darlene. But is there anything else that you wanted to add before we sign off today? Just if, if your heart is calling to you, it's really important to listen. Um, we, we have chosen these specific lives. Um, and if you're getting the nudge, if you're getting a wink, it's for a reason. And don't think you're doing it alone or you're the only person. There's so many resources out there. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's important that you take care of you and, and listen. And then a daily practice will help support that as well. So whether it's, it's walking every day, it's taking five minutes to just hold yourself, <laughs> just do something um, for you. And if you're worried about, you know, maybe that would take time away from your family or where am I going to find that? Everybody in your life will benefit when you take time for yourself because you'll be full. They say, you know, yeah, you'll be full and you'll be able to share so much more from that space. Yeah, to fill for, to give to people from your overflow and not from your cup, right? Especially if you're a healer. Especially. (laughs) Yeah. And it's funny because I even said this in the last module of the trauma informed care thing certificate (laughs) doing in the mastermind, (laughs) which is that it's like, yeah, like you, you need to open up that space for yourself, right? Like you need to open up that space for yourself and not in a way that feels like it's obligatory, but in a way that like allows you to really let your uniqueness come forward. Right. Because that's what some people are afraid of. It's like, well, I'm weird. And, um, I don't want to see how much weirder I am. (laughs) It's like, well, guess what? You're going to fit in really well with me and Darlene because we're extremely strange and love it. We celebrate that we're weird. Um, because that uniqueness is what makes you, you, that's how we learn more about this infinite intelligence we have access to. That's how we learn more about what opportunities and possibilities are available to us. And we can't do that if we don't open up space, and, and this is what I said in the module too, which is that the higher up you go as a coach, a healer, a mentor, a therapist, a light worker, however you identify yourself, the more time and space you need to open for yourself. It becomes, it's not like a, okay, well, yeah, we need to be consistent. So if you can do this like once a week or something like that, it's yeah. fine. But no, you get to this level in particular, like if you're not doing it every day, it's going to be harder to sustain a lot harder to sustain. And it's, and it doesn't, that doesn't mean you post every day or you do activities for your business or something. No, it's just taking care of yourself. You are the foundation of all of it. Right. The word that's coming through right now, really important. And I don't know that I've used it before. Soften. I love. What is it going to take to soften your body so that you can receive all the love from the universe, the love from your family, soften. What is it going, what, what can you do to soften your body, your soul so that you can receive fully? Yeah. See, I'm just like, I love that word so much. Yeah. <laughs> I love the frequency of words. And I'm also, it's just like so perfect for just where I am and what I desire to do. Even just today, like that was kind of my goal was I was like, I was going to do this. And I have a couple other meetings, but I was like, my kids are still home from school and I'm just, it was all about, I was saying presence to myself, right? Like just 
presence with myself and with them. I always set intentions each morning. You know, I kind of ask God about the intention for the day. Um, but oh, I just like so feeling that. Thank you, honey. I'm going to take My that with pleasure. me today. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, friends. So thank you so much for joining us. Whether you're here live or on the replay, we so appreciate you tuning in and spending time with us. I really encourage you to connect with Darlene. I know that she talked about all the things that she offers and they're all well and good. But what I think one thing I have to say is that when you meet with Darlene, you're going to feel um, this, this unconditional compassion and gentleness that just being in her presence makes you feel held and supported and loved. And whether we're talking about skills that you're learning or anything that she's teaching you, none of it honestly matters because um, the energy you receive from her is palpable. So I really encourage oh, you to just you. have a conversation with her, you know, like just reach out and say hi, cause she's really friendly and she'll talk to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, thank you for joining us here. We're all be live again next Monday, same time, same place for another episode of heal profoundly and adoringly. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being here, Darlene. Thank you. That's an honor. You are so welcome. And I'll see everybody next week. Bye friends. Bye.